This week we're going to be covering the importance of research design. We're going to talk about different ways in which data can be collected and what approaches are most appropriate depending on the research question that you have. In particular, we can think about research design in three different buckets. On the left-hand side, we have exploratory research, which is where we'll start. And on the right side, we have more quantitative or data-based research, and that branches into two categories, one of which is descriptive research, and the other is causal research. And we're going to cover all of those topics, but before we do that, I actually want to show you a short video of our former Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, where he's talking about weapons of mass destruction during the Iraq War. I know it might seem a little strange to watch this, but it'll make for a really good point in a moment. There are reports that there is no evidence of a direct link between Baghdad and some of these terrorist organizations. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. <laughs> so he got a lot of flack for those statements, but I actually think they're spot on. We can start with that first one, which are there are things that we know that we know, but for marketing research, that's not particularly interesting because if we already know the answer to something, then there's really nothing else for us to do. There's a second category, which are the known unknowns. This is a set of things that we know we don't have an answer to. So we might have a specific research question in mind, like how much people are willing to pay for a product or which product is more favorable under which circumstances. We just don't know the answer to those yet. And of course, in this course, we'll cover how to answer those particular types of questions. But then we actually have that third category. This is where he got some flack. Those unknown unknowns. It's the situations where we don't even know what question to ask. And it is that category of information, that category of knowledge, where exploratory research fits in. That's where we say, well, we don't have a specific research question in mind, but we want to investigate. We want to find out. We want to hear from our consumers and see what they're saying. And based on that, we can then define the specific research questions and be in that second level where we have known unknowns. All of this is useful and all of this is part of marketing research and it's something that we'll cover in depth over the course of the next few videos. Broadly speaking, we can break up exploratory and more quantitative research into two categories and there are trade-offs between these two. So for instance, exploratory research tends to be more holistic in nature, it's a little bit more open, it tends to be more opportunity samples as opposed to systematic samples, there's less quantitative data, and there's often lack of ability to perform statistical tests. Now again, they serve a specific purpose, which is to say they're there to design questions and design research agendas, though they have their limitations. On the other hand, when you're dealing more with quantitative research, you're going to have larger sample sizes, quantitative measures like scales, or purchase intentions, or price paid, or archival analyses of data like sales data. Data will be structured, and we can certainly perform statistical tests, which is a large topic that we'll cover later on in this course. But again, what's critical is that both of these can work together to help develop an entire research agenda, and that's something we'll wrap up with this series of videos discussing in detail. Now, this class would be really boring if I didn't get to make some jokes every once in a while. So to make the case for what a qualitative versus a quantitative research approach looks like, we're going to look at two commercials. Now, these are real commercials. They're a little bit silly, but they make the point. And so the first one we're going to look at is a car commercial, and here it is. So... What do you think? Don't take this wrong, but it doesn't make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Right. Yeah, I find it dark and disturbing. I mean, it's, it's neither cuddly nor waddly. Okay. Binky, any thoughts? It scares the f out of me. Perfect. That's just the reaction we were looking for. The all-new Dodge Caliber. It's anything but cute. Hit it! So, silly, of course, but a nice example of qualitative research. This is a focus group. It's a very classic qualitative research approach that we will cover in depth. What they're basically trying to do is take ideas from the heads of those little characters and extract them and convert them into some sort of information. And here they do that in an oral setting where you have people observing something and giving you information in words that are then interpreted by managers, which we saw at the end of this video. Now, I'm not gonna say this is a great approach, but it is certainly a very common one that exists in the marketing research world. Pivoting to the quantitative approach, we're gonna look at something from the company Shreddies. This is a Canadian company that sells uh, basically like breakfast cereals that are shredded wheat that have this shape. And they had this brilliant advertising campaign, which I just think is super funny, super effective, uh, and makes a nice case for what quantitative research looks like. Have a watch. So Shreddies is introducing new diet shreds. Mm. So if you're just to give them a rating from one to 10, for example, what would you give them? Seven. A seven, okay. Well, they wouldn't mind. And what if uh, we squished it right down? What if it was just ranked between one and two? One. Same. If we rated them from an A to a Z? Probably keep it around E. E? Yeah. Okay. 
on a rainbow scale, the colors going from yellow to violet. Where in the rainbow would you say the diamond shreddies fall? What color, roughly? If the diamond shreddies were an animal, where would you rank them from, you know, an amoeba up to uh, an elephant? I'll go with a kangaroo. A kangaroo? Yeah. Interesting. How do you, do you have any reason why it connects with a kangaroo? No, it's just a happy animal. Now, hopefully you all got the, the joke here, right? Diamond shreddies, square shreddies, basically the same thing. Um, but the point is, again, what are they trying to do? They're trying to take a concept that is in someone's head, which is how much they like something, or how much they find it enjoyable, or how much they're willing to pay for it, or whatever it might be, and extract that vague concept and convert it into some numerical representation that we can then perform statistical analysis on. Now, I don't suggest the animal scale that they were using, but that first scale with a numerical representation of how much you like this product is perfectly normal and perfectly standard. What we're trying to do, again, is take an idea that is in someone's head, and rather than them just saying words about it, quantifying that idea. And that is the essence of some quantitative research, is to say, can we take an idea that is often very vague and fuzzy and in our heads and turn it into something numerical? Now, the next few videos are going to dig into each of these approaches, going through pros and cons, and appropriate use cases for each of them. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll be starting with exploratory research in the very next video.